Hello amigos, Ramen coming at ya. If you're a gamer, you know the three biggest gaming companies that are often put head to head. Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo. Each company in their own way has managed to capture the hearts of people. Whether it be through their crazy catalog of games, inventive consoles, or the characters they've created. We all have our favorite companies. My favorite gaming company is Nintendo. As a kid, my first gaming memory was playing Mario 64, a game which at the time blew many people's minds. It was the first 3D Mario game where not only you can move one way, you had different ways to move. The game gave players the freedom to play a Mario game the way they wanted. You can either kill a baby penguin or fly through the clouds. The choice was yours. But as I get older, it's hard not to see Nintendo is not what it used to be. For every step forward in innovation that they make, they always seem to take a few steps back and fail to realize the problem. Why is that? Well, while doing some research and asking around, I gathered seven major points and problems with Nintendo. But before I explain my problems with Nintendo, I'll give a brief history of the company. Back in the late 1800s, Nintendo started off as a playing card company in Kyoto, Japan. Fast forward to the 1960s, Nintendo enters the electronic gaming scene, paving the way for what's about to become the next gaming revolution. The 80s roll around and Nintendo drops the Nintendo Entertainment System on us like a pixel bombshell. Mario and Luigi burst onto the scene and suddenly everyone's addicted to plumbing and saving princesses. Luigi's in a bind, giant turtles out to get him, creepy crabs are right behind, fighter flies, cheaper shites, they're all coming out the pipes. Mario, where are the NES was so popular that you were instantly the cool kid in school. It was like winning the lottery. Then the Super Nintendo Entertainment System hits the market, taking gaming to a whole new level. We're Mario World, created especially for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It's a bit more exciting, a bit more challenging, a bit more graphic, a bit more colorful, a bit more realistic. Suddenly we're throwing green shells in Mario Kart and we're getting into heated debates about which Zelda game is the best. Then the 90s come a knocking and Nintendo introduces us to the Game Boy. The Game Boy occupied a lot of kids' free time as well as their batteries. I mean, we gotta catch them all somehow, right? Then came the Nintendo 64, bringing us groundbreaking 3D graphics and the invention of the thumb blister. Mario Kart 64 became a staple of every sleepover, and we were all shouting, It's me, Mario! Then the 2000s came rolling in, and Nintendo hits us with the GameCube. It's like a lunchbox of pure joy, with classics like Super Smash Bros. Melee and Mario Sunshine. And who could forget playing Smash Bros with your brothers or friends and trying to see who's the best? The GameCube, while not being as powerful as its competition, made up what it lacked with its library of fun and creative games. We then have the line of DS's, DSi, 3DS, DSi XL, new 3DS. Each console was an improvement upon the other with the ability to play games like Pokemon, Mario 64, the system was also revolutionary too. The system allowed for portable gaming on the go. And well, the screen was pretty cool. The normal DS allowed you to play Game Boy games. The DSi had a DSi browser. The 3DS had a 3D feature that almost gave you a headache if you used it too long. Then the Wii came along and suddenly we're flailing our arms around like maniacs, playing Wii Sports. Not only could the Wii play games, but it was also able to play GameCube games. The Wii was was also responsible for many broken TVs. But hey, either way, at least you burn some calories playing Wii Sports. Right here, I'm, I'm getting ready to serve. All I do is throw that ball up in the air. And when I, oh, jeez. And there goes the tennis racket. <laughs> I didn't have it on there. Just as a reminder, strap on people. Then we got the Wii U, and not even Nintendo knew what the system was, as well as the consumers, and I mean with commercials that are cringy like this, I can see why the Wii U kind of tanked. Whoa. I look good. Look at that. Yeah, I look like I've been upgraded. Now in the 2020s, Nintendo was still killing it with the Switch. It's a console, it's a handheld, it's a magical gaming Swiss army knife. Animal Crossing takes over our lives and suddenly paying off a virtual mortgage feels like a major life accomplishment. The history of Nintendo is interesting. From a company that made playing cards to a company that is responsible for making some of our favorite childhood games. But eventually, as you start to get older, it's hard to ignore that the company you once loved 
has become everything they fought against. No longer are people free to play Nintendo games on YouTube or blast their music. If they do, they might risk getting a strike by YouTube. While most gaming companies love when their game is shown off, to Nintendo, it's all about how they can monetize said content. But Nintendo wouldn't capitalize on their old IPs and remake them and make us pay more for them, right? When Nintendo makes a new system, whether it be a handheld or a home console, you expect games from previous systems to be ported no problem. Maybe Nintendo decides to add some quality of life improvements, DLC, and all that junk. But the problem with these ports and remakes is that they're often copies of the original game and are often marked up in price. Some would say, hey, but we're getting better resolution and more DLC. But does that really warrant the price when I can buy the same game on the original hardware for half that? The Nintendo Switch for being a great console, most of their catalogs of games are in fact Wii U ports. Most of the games ported over don't have many big changes that really warrant paying $60 for. New Super Mario on the Switch is pretty much the same game from the Wii U. The only thing they added was an easy mode and removed the touchscreen challenges, which may makes no sense. You get the Super Luigi DLC and the two new playable characters Nabbit and Toadette. So you get a game that adds a few things and removes one. I'll give another example. Pokemon Tournament, a game that no one was expecting on the Wii U. It was a Pokemon game, but you battle as a Pokemon like a Tekken game. Sounds like a perfect game to port, right? What Nintendo did was port the game, added a battle pack with two new characters and a few modes. The game by itself is $60, but if you want the battle pack with the game, it's $74. I like Pokemon Tournament, but I'm not paying 10 bucks for a battle pass and some extra modes so I can play it on the Switch. If anything, I'll just buy the regular game or, I don't know, buy it on the Wii U and play it there. The problem doesn't just stem from these two ports. Almost every port on the Switch is from the Wii U. The games are tweaked just a bit to warrant the price tag. It's like buying an iPhone. The phones are tweaked just a bit with each new iteration, but there's nothing different about them that makes them stand out to warrant the price. All Nintendo has to do is port the game, maybe discount it a bit, maybe say $40 to $30. If Nintendo's going to add a port, add enough content to warrant the price tag. I'm gonna give one game praise, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This game is a rare exception because that game received consistent support through its lifespan with new characters and tracks. So the price tag I can justify, but games like say Captain Freakin' Toad, it's not worth buying again. I only saw like a handful of friends talk about this game. It kinda looks boring. While the Switch is full of Wii U ports that don't warrant the price tag, what about the AAA game ports that we get on the Switch? Well, due to the Switch being very underpowered, big titles like LA Noir or Outer of Worlds or the recent release of Mortal Kombat 1, all these AAA games tend to either look bad or run awfully. This results in developers making bare bone ports of these games by reducing the visuals so the game can at least run. If you played the recent Mortal Kombat on the Switch, the game from a visual standpoint looks like somebody hit potato mode on the Switch. The game is $60 on the Switch for a game that doesn't even look good and has consistent frame drops. The game is better played on the PC or PlayStation 5. The Wii U from a technical standpoint was also very underpowered. It also received barebone ports as well. If Nintendo wants high quality ports, their hardware needs to be upgraded to where it's at least on the level of a Steam Deck. You can't justify a $60 port when it's either poorly optimized on that console or the content added is minimal compared to its original port. Nintendo needs to mark down some of their Wii U ports on the eShop because you can't still have these games be so much. Nintendo always has sales for some of their games, but when's the last time you saw a AAA Mario game go on sale? While Nintendo's pricing for some of their games and ports are bad, the extra add-ons for their hardware that you may or may not need, well, it's even worse. When you buy a new gaming system, it's normal to buy, say, an extra controller or two to play with friends. Maybe you buy a hard drive to store your games, or maybe you buy an overpriced piece of cardboard that for some reason is needed to play a game. Looking at you, Nintendo. Nintendo Labo, worst thing you ever made. 
who thought this was a good idea? Nintendo is no stranger to weird overpriced accessories. Nintendo 64 had them, the DS, the Wii, every Nintendo console iteration had it. Heck, third party companies made a living making accessories, but the problem is half of these add-on or accessories are kinda pointless. Hear me out before you get angry. Jed, how easy is it to drive in the new Mario Kart Wii game? And Jed says, get behind the wheel! The Wii wheel is pretty cool and makes you feel like a race car driver in Mario Kart. It's just the right size for hands. The Joy-Con wheel design-wise, it's uncomfortable. Turning feels like a chore. And more importantly, the triggers, you know, the thing you need to drift, kind of hard to press at times. The Joy-Con wheel is very cheap in price, so it won't break the bank. But wouldn't you rather just lay in bed and play Mario Kart the way the great gaming gods intended? You know, plastic wheels are one thing, but Nintendo decided to create a solution for something that, to many Switch players, don't really go through. The battery pack. Now a battery pack is great. They keep your phone charged when you run out of battery, but the problem for the Switch battery pack is that it takes batteries. So not only are you making sure your Switch is charged, but the battery pack for the Joy-Cons also have batteries. Unless you're playing for 12 hours straight, I can't see people really using this. Most modern day battery packs are rechargeable. The idea of having to buy batteries like this, like it's a freaking Game Boy, is money down the drain. So what I'm about to say might make you throw flaming apples at me, but I think amiibos are just okay. I get they earn you items in game and they make great collectibles, but most newer Nintendo games don't really use the amiibos. Sometimes it feels like Nintendo completely forgets about the Amiibo altogether. When Amiibos came out, the idea of having this Nintendo character I can hold felt great. I can bring it to Smash Bros games and it felt like the Amiibo was my own. It was unique. But sorry to say this, Amiibos are just NFC chips. They can be easily reproduced. I've seen products that can replicate an NFC chip just like an Amiibo. I'm not saying buy these products, but you get the point. Now for me, I don't see the appeal of Amiibos, but if you're a collector, maybe it's nice to have and, well, it looks beautifully sculpted. Now, how about the accessories you need to play your system? The Nintendo Joy-Cons. They're probably the most expensive accessory the Switch has. If your controller has drift, guess what? You're dropping 60 smackaroos on a new controller. And while buying a new controller is fine, Joy-Cons have a design flaw. So say you're playing Smash Bros or Zelda really, really hard. Well, bad news, you're gonna get drift. Now, some say you can fix the drift. I can't, and maybe some of you either. So you end up buying a new controller. I say just buy a pro controller and call it a day. Or maybe buy a third party controller because you're probably going to get it cheaper than paying for it on the Nintendo website or Amazon. Nintendo's pricing for some of these accessories are insane, no doubt. I mean, if you want the ultimate Switch, none of this is needed. Just play your console, you don't need a battery pack, you don't need amiibo, and you damn know you don't need that freaking Switch Joy-Con wheel. But if you do get most of it, get it used. But for the love of God, never buy Nintendo Labo. The game's fun for like five minutes and then it wears off. And then you realize you just spent 80 bucks for flipping cardboard. Like, I get it. It might be fun for kids, but cardboard is free. You can get it from the trash. Now, Nintendo accessories are kind of pointless and oftentimes scams, but Nintendo seems to be neglecting some of their other franchise characters and IPs. Hey, pardon the interruption, but I want to talk about Power World. This game people see as this Pokemon knockoff. While some of the pals do look a little like Pokemon, some of them actually do have unique design. The mechanics of Power World are a lot more refined and funner. The game takes all the best aspects of Ark Survival, all the best aspects of Breath of the Wild, and all the best aspects of, well, any survival game, and pretty much combines them, and you get this fun monster companion type game. Yes, you get to capture pals, and you do get to battle with them, but you also get to shoot some of them out of a bazooka. I think a little competition for Nintendo is good. With that, let's get back into it.
It's easy to see that Nintendo has been making hit after hit with Mario Wonders, Pikmin 4, and even Kirby and the Lost Kingdom. But it's hard to ignore the elephant in the room that Nintendo seems to be forgetting a few of their characters who deserve a sequel or maybe another game in general. It kind of seems like Nintendo plays favorites or plays it a bit safe by putting their money in their well-known IPs. I mean, when's the last time you've seen a Kid Icarus game besides a in Smash Bros. We only got one game for the 3DS and it was great flying through the clouds and shooting enemies. I'm not asking for a new game, maybe a port or a remake. Kid Icarus isn't the only dead IP. Star Fox, granted had a Wii U port, but it sucked. We haven't had a mainline Star Fox game since 2017. That game would be perfect for the Switch. Granted, most Star Fox games are just all the same, just upscaled and kind of, I don't know, they all kind of blend in together. But point is, we deserve a new Star Fox game for the Switch. I could name more examples, but point is that Nintendo has a ton of old characters and game IPs that could be great on the Switch. They just need a fresh coat of paint. I get Nintendo doesn't want to waste money, but this is the same company that sold people freaking cardboard. You're telling me we can't get Zelda Wind Waker on the Switch? Any of you find it weird that every Zelda game was ported to the Switch? Well, most, but the one game that wasn't ported was Wind Waker. I find it really dumb considering Nintendo used that same game to sell Wii U consoles. It has Super Mario 3D World, Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD, and Rayman Legends. Oh, yeah. And it comes with two free games. Hot button popcorn, that's a deal. I can continue to bash Nintendo, but we are getting a Princess Peach game. Last time I saw her was on a DS. Guess that's progress? One IP that I would love to see return, weirdly enough, is ARMS. Yeah, the game where you play as these characters with weird arms and you box people like it's a game of rock and sock and robots. The game was truly one of a kind. I was kind of sad to see Nintendo abandon it. That was the game that I bought on my Switch that felt fresh. The IP had potential, so for it to be abandoned was saddening. And that's what I think Nintendo needs to do better, at trying to give old and their new IPs either more support or content, or another game in general. Nintendo shouldn't jump ship on new IPs, but the harder they push them like with Splatoon, the more people will actually love these games. Nintendo might be neglecting their old IPs, but the eShop, the place where we buy games, has its own set of problems. eShop is a place to explore and browse the newest releases and pre-order games, and also buy them. Each layout for these shops are different. The Wii is more like clicking on channels, and the Wii U is similar to the Wii Shop, but better with a nice clean UI that's easy to navigate. Everything has its own category, and when you load up the Wii U Shop, you get this fun slot machine minigame. When you enter the Switch eShop, you would think that they take what worked for the Wii U eShop and improve upon it but instead the Switch eShop almost looks like it's still in its beta. The Switch eShop it's more like a grid with channels, which granted may be easy for some, but the Wii U eShop had channels that were themed based on holidays at the time. The UI felt like care was put into it. It's been years and the Switch eShop still looks bland and generic. The 3DS eShop for a system not so powerful had an amazing UI that was often fun to navigate. I sometimes get Get lost for hours scrolling and looking for upcoming games and trailers. A virtual shop should feel almost like an experience. I should want to keep exploring the moment I boot it up. The Switch's eShop, I want to buy my game and be done with it. Another thing I like to bring up is the lack of music. If you heard that right, the Switch eShop has no background music. Every Nintendo shop had music, Wii, 3DS, Wii U, the Switch nothing but silence. Worst part is, it's not that hard. Nintendo has the resources. Speaking of resources, the Nintendo 3DS and Wii U eShop were completely shut down. These eShop games, bad or good, are lost forever. The only way to play them is through emulation. Gaming preservation is something Nintendo seems to not understand. When you remove an online shop from a decades-old console, it's almost like you're erasing history. For some, these shops meant a lot to gamers. 
the Switch eShop lacks the magic the 3DS and Wii U eShop had. I remember on Christmas going on the Wii U eShop and seeing the UI be Christmas themed. It almost felt like someone out there cared about us gamers, the people that buy these systems. While virtual shops are one thing, Nintendo's innovation can also often backfire or be faulty. It's a no-brainer that if you're going to become a company like Nintendo, creativity is crucial. And Nintendo has proven that with systems like the GameCube, Wii, but for each system that they made, it can often have a design flaw, where you feel like the look of the system was given more care than the actual functionality. But systems like the 3DS, while good, the 3D part of the system sucks turning on. If you turn on the 3D for too long, it hurts your eyes. Nintendo realized their mistake, and that's why they made the 2DS, which removes the 3D altogether. The Wii U, a system regarded as one of Nintendo's biggest failures due to its cringy marketing, lack of third-party support, but the biggest design flaw the Wii U has is the fact that you have to be tethered to the console to play it. Like, if you go far enough, the tablet, yes, I'm calling it a tablet, will disconnect. Nintendo crams so much into this thing. TV remotes, streaming services, amiibo. Nintendo wanted to make the Wii U, the Swiss army knife of consoles. As creative as that sounds, Nintendo should have made the tablet itself the console. It should have not been tethered to a system. Luckily, Nintendo learned with the Nintendo Switch. Speaking of that, the Switch at release was great. A new portable handheld console that played games at 720p undocked and 1080p docked. This system was revolutionary, but the Switch launch wasn't perfect. There were reports of the console warping, glitches, and to this day, the thing that hinders any enjoyment of the Switch at times is the dreaded Joy-Con drift. You can't keep getting away with it! So if you're playing a game of Mario Wonders, and you're cramming your thumb so hard on the joystick, your character is gonna move left while you're trying to move right. The Joy-Con sticks suck. That's why I recommend the Switch Lite. While you can't dock it, the sticks are a lot better. Like I said before, most of Nintendo systems do have a design flaw that hinders our enjoyment of the system. But Nintendo does at times take all that feedback and makes the console even better and sometimes more cost effective. Not all are great, like the last iteration of the Wii looks like a toy and lacks online, but while Nintendo systems have a design flaw that sometimes do suck, their mobile game division sucks up your time and your money. There's one thing I hate about the gaming industry is mobile freemium games. A freemium game is described as a free-to-play game that has in-app purchases. Sometimes those purchases are necessary to progress in the game, such as games like Clash of Clans or that weird Family Guy mobile game. The idea of Nintendo getting into mobile gaming seems like they will make their games fun. That is not the case. Nintendo has made some of their franchise characters like Mario, Fire Emblem, Animal Crossing, and Mario Kart into shallow games that only offers two minutes of fun before that in-app purchase screen pops up. I'm not hating on some of these mobile games. Some of them are fun, but the idea of Nintendo making them leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Games like Mario Run is okay, but the game is a free demo where in order to progress, you gotta pay $10. At that point, the game's not even worth it. The Pokemon and Fire Emblem series, their mobile games are okay. Their in-app purchases are not as aggressive as Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, where you spend real-world currency to reduce a cooldown timer so you can get some more stuff for your house. Nintendo makes a lot of money from these mobile games daily. While they offer a small distraction for kids, when money comes to play, parents almost feel like they have to buy said game, or the kids will get mad. If Nintendo wants to make mobile games, they're allowed to, but remove the cooldown timer and progression restrictions in your games, cause these old tactics were okay back in 2011. But now people are smart to know when a mobile game is a scam. The concept of Nintendo making mobile games is still crazy to think, but if there's one thing Nintendo hates is gaming preservation. Gaming preservation is important. It's a part of gaming. It's a way to play old games and relive that nostalgia. But Nintendo is one of those companies that's against it, often trying to take down big emulators like Dolphin or Semu, as well as ROM sites. Dolphin was uh, scheduled to come out on Steam back in March. It was announced that a Steam version was in the works. 
But that has all changed because on the 27th of May, there was a update from the Dolphin team about the Steam version saying that the Steam release had been postponed indefinitely. Nintendo's way of preservation is not the best. They tend to stick to traditional consoles that they made, like the N64, SNES, and Game Boy. But consoles like the GameCube and the Wii are pretty much absent from the Switch library, while Wii games and DS games were playable on the Wii U. Nintendo does have ways to play some of their old catalog of games. If you do buy a subscription to their online service, you get some pretty cool old retro games. But most, if not all of them, are things that were on the the Wii or Wii U Virtual Console. The only benefit of having some of these games is that it's on the Switch, so you can take it on the go. You also get a cool layout. I mean, the idea of having to pay for a service that was free on launch day is dumb to me. Also, if I'm playing for Switch Online, I would like more benefits than playing games that I could have played by other means. While Nintendo's Virtual Console isn't good, their online is even worse. You're telling me we're living in 2024 and Nintendo still uses friend codes? Yeah! Sony and Xbox uses gamer tags or gamer names or PSNs or whatever they use. It's much easier. Friend codes are very outdated. One more point I want to bring up. Remember Miiverse? Miiverse was like Nintendo's version of Twitter where you got to interact with Nintendo fans and even talk about your favorite games. I think the Switch can benefit from a Miiverse type online mode. I think that would make the purchase of Switch Online worth it. I would even say the Switch can also benefit from Netflix or Hulu or any streaming service, at least for people who want to stream. Switch Online's infrastructure is a bit of a mess. The lack of Wii and GameCube games, friend codes, no party chats is a clear sign that Nintendo does not know how to do online, which isn't bad, but it does show Nintendo has this play it safe approach when it comes to online gaming, which while fair, as Nintendo is a family company, but the Switch is supposed to be an all-in-one handheld capable of taking gaming on the go. To me, the Switch feels like a console that while it does play good games, will always be behind every single console that comes after it. While Nintendo has no doubt played a pivotal role in shaping the gaming industry and creating cherished memories for millions, it's essential to acknowledge and address the ongoing issue. From persistent hardware limitations to questionable online services, there's room for improvement. Nintendo is a company with humble beginnings. They started out as a company who made playing cards, to a company beloved by millions all over the world. While they have problems, I still love Nintendo, through the good and the bad. But but I feel Nintendo does have room for improvement. My name is Ramen and don't forget to jump up like a superstar. You have a good night.